السلام عليكم What would happen when the soil particles are glued together to form one unit? What do we call this unit? And how this unit affects the movement of water, the aeration, and heat movement in the soil? And what is the role of the soil microorganisms and other soil animals? And also our role in this, in this thing. So, without further ado, let's start today's lecture, which is about the soil structure. Soil structure. Now, what is exactly soil structure and how it looks like? We already said that to get soil texture, you need to have the combination of sand, silt, and clay all together. Their percentage will form different textural classes. But a soil structure is is something else. In a soil structure is a larger unit than 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 the soil texture because the structure describes the arrangement of the soil particles into a stable unit which is called aggregate or pad. So basically, it looks like the second picture here, well, as you see. So if you grab a soil then you would see that these soil particles are all glued together and aggregated aggregated by clay and organic matter and oxides and roots and so on into different units like what you see here and this basically called called a soil structure because it's now they are forming a diff a, another unit forming a structure of the soil and because when these structures okay they 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 are arranged together they also can have like spaces between each unit and a unit and that also would influence the movement of air and the movement of water and pores and and and, and water and so on and even the roots now let's get to understand the different types of soil structure that exist The first type of structure is called single grain. Now, what is single grain? In a simple way, if you go to the peach and you take a shovel or take a handful of soil, you would, feel, you would see that this soil particles, as you put it in your hand and you try to shake it, everything will smash and it will separate it into different grains. And this is what we call a single grain. So it does not form a specific structure. It basically can split into single grains, as you as as the case for for the sand, for the sand, either the sand peach or the dune sands, and so on. And why these things happen? Because simply this sand or this sand does not have its charges, and they don't have larger surface area and therefore because of this reason they don't have so much glue can stick to them and therefore they cannot be glued what i mean by glue i mean those organic materials or anything it cannot hold organic material it cannot hold for example um it cannot hold for example aluminum oxide and so on and therefore there is no glue on them that's why once you put them in your hand and you try to shake your hand they will be they will be smashed into and separated into single grains and this is very common in sand the second type of soil structure is my favorite is the maltesers now what is this it's not malteser but i use malteser as 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 a metaphor something for you to remember we always remember food right yeah okay so the second type of structure is granular and this type of structure is very famous in in a horizon why because because this type of structure basically looks like looks like granules granules exactly like the maltesers and they're basically they're like balls and they consist of organic matter and clay so if you look like into them like the pictures you would find them they really looks like green and they you can use malteser to remember them granular 
the Maltesar structure. The third type of structure is the blatty. Now, the blatty, it just looks like the sheets of the books. So, if you look at them, you would find that they are flat aggregates and they are usually very common in E horizon or they can be common in, in a compacted layers. And again, this type of blade structure can be formed naturally, like the picture as you see here. So imagine, imagine you are looking at some of the mountains with a blade a blade type of sheets and then as this mountain is broken in place into finer particles into soil then the soil will be compacted into sheets like what you can see in the picture above here or the picture below so that's why they can be formed naturally or they can be formed by convection so when you have a farm for example and your farm has a lot of like clay soil because you need a clay soil to get this kind of formation and then uh, because clay is is like sticky and plastic once you have the tillage you basically can compact the soil some places at some places especially the places where the where the where the where the plow cannot reach and and therefore it will be compacted in into layers like this or it can be compacted for example in case that you have this type of soil in like a soil with a clay and then imagine it's next to the road where people walk a lot or the, with their cars and then it can form it can form this type of structure the other type of soil structure is called blocky and this is looks like blocks like you see here in these pictures so how this soil structure is formed and where it is commonly can be found well basically you remember the bee horizon the bee horizon especially those with clay accumulation bt usually because they contain clay and clay have a huge surface area so it can absorb absorb water as it absorb as this clay soil or PT horizon absorb water they expand but once they lose the water due to evaporation or drainage they will get swell or I mean they will they will contract they will shrink so the process of expansion and shrinkage would basically after a certain time would makes this soil to be broken down into into blocks like like what can you see here now something is very important to remember about this soil structure that these soil structures once they get dry they really looks looks really very hard as you see in these pictures they have sharp angles and they're really hard now the last soil structure is clomenor and prismatic now this soil structure is completely different than what i presented before why because all other structures all other structures they are almost like in in a horizontal way this structure is vertical you can observe from these pictures that they look like like columns now why they occur like this basically it can happen naturally again in the conditions where you have rocks they looks like this as you remember from geology or maybe you have seen from these pictures as you see down here with the picture with the knife so this is a sedimentary rock but basically as you see they are like in a column in a column in a columnar shape but once they are again becoming like a soil because of the weathering they will be in a columnar shape or it can be happened in a soil rich also with clay like again the pt but this time rich with rich with sodium and this is very common in arid region now what happens with the sodium sodium as you remember is one of the dispersion factors as you did in the in the in the hydrometer experiment why did you add it for example sodium hexamethaphosphate because you wanted this chemicals which is rich of sodium 
to get into the spaces between the particles and then disperse them disperse them because you have sodium with a positive charge and then coated all the particles and positive with positive repel again the same things can happen with this with this soil structure because now it's rich with sodium and once water is there it dispersed and then it will broken down into into columnar in shape now you would see that you have two different shapes you have columnar and you have prismatic all of them they are vertical in shape but what is the big difference between them and how can you distinguish whether this is a columnar or prismatic very simple well basically you look at the top so if you look at the picture to the right you would see that uh, columnar have a round rounded top whereas prismatic having a flat a flat top so that's that's one of the crystal clear differences that you can distinguish between these two now we have seen that when you have sand silt and clay and they are glued by different materials like organic matter like the roots and they are held together they form different units but in these units you have some spaces between them and because of that definitely would have a different impact on the water air and roots movement if we just look at at a simple example look at the soil texture not the structure the texture then you would find out that the texture with more spaces between the particles would have faster movement of water air and also roots because you have larger spaces between the particles that's the case for sand for example compared to clay the same concept again can be applied for the soil structure now the structure with more spaces between the aggregates the one which would have faster and more water movement air movement and roots because more spaces between them so if we compare if we compare that between all of the structures that we have seen you would find that single grain would have a faster aeration water and roots movement because you have more spaces then you have the granular one then you have blocky and the prismatic almost like the water movement or the infiltration rate is moderate to slow and finally you have the blatey one the blatey would be slow to very slow why because the blatey structure remember it's basically clay and it comes like sheets and it is compacted so as water try to pass through them they basically they basically stop the water movement and they slow it down so as you see from the picture here also at the top how the water can move in each of these of these differences one can ask himself a question or herself a question what are the factors that can affect the the soil structure so the factors are summarized in the table as you see a plus sign means that it has a positive impact and a negative sign means it has a negative impact so let's see all of the factors one of the factors is the content of organic matter so the more organic matter you have in the soil the more the structure will be stable and strong not only that but the organic matter acts is basically a food for plants and for the soil organisms and if you have more food for these it means that you have more roots and soil organisms which themselves also can increase the stability and also create pathways in the soil now let's move to the soil organisms soil organisms like like the bacteria like the fungi like the animals all of them can stabilize the soil why because the soil animals like the bacteria they can secrete some of the materials like liquid and this material can act as a glue animals also once they eat they also produce the waste so the waste from these animals can also act as a glue to stabilize the soil another point that the soil animals when they move into into the soil they pro 
they basically creates pathways that can later on be used for water movement and aeration and so on fungi also they have something looks like the root if you look at the picture below here and this is called hyphae so now the hyphae itself can act exactly similar to the roots create pathways and also stabilize the soil clay is a third factor that have also a positive impact on the soil structure you remember that clay has a higher surface area and it has charges and therefore the more the clay in your soil the stronger the soil will be because it the clay binds the particles together freezing and thawing is another factor so how freezing and thawing acts well basically freezing and thawing have a similar effect to to expansion and and contrast of of the soil so once the soil basically freeze they contrast and once they thaw they expand and because of this movement similar to the swelling and expansion or contrast and and shrinkage of the soil due to water it basically it basically broke down and then it creates it creates pathways that are good and cracks that are good for water we human can also affect the soil structure so when we till we actually affect different things so for example the tillage process can create baths in the soil that can allow water and air to move faster this is a positive impact the other things that during the tillage process actually we are destroying the soil structure and by doing so we can kill the soil animals like the earthworms another very important thing that some of the times if the soil is mainly clay then clay would be more susceptible to soil erosion so when we do tillage we actually compact the soils and because of this it actually affects the water movement in in the clay so a lot of water would actually stay over the surface and might run over the surface eroding the soil later on rather than being infiltrated down into the soil why clay is so susceptible to convection because of the cohesion force and the blasticity and the plasticity that it has as compared to sand for example so that's all for this lecture i hope that you enjoyed it you explore more things about the soil and now the food is also related to the soil again not teasers so have a good day and see you bye